What if I told you that no matter where you live in the US, with very few exceptions, looking at you, North Dakota, that you could go to a store and legally buy cannabis? This was news to me, this is news to a lot of us, but that's what's currently happening in the US. Let's break this down. What we're really talking about here is synthetic cannabinoids. You may have heard of this. There's Delta-8, there's Delta-10, there's HHC, there's THCA. There are all these acronyms, there are all these products that are being sold, and in fact, look around your city. There have been a lot more CBD stores pop up in the past couple years, I'm willing to bet. That's all because of a 2018 federal act called the Farm Bill. I'll walk you through how this all happened. So essentially, when we're talking about marijuana, the root plant that we're talking about is cannabis plant. And when we talk about cannabis, you've got kind of two offshoots. You have hemp, which is typically defined as less than 0.3% Delta-9 THC. That's not thought to be psychoactive. Now, marijuana, which is illegal in most places, is defined as more than 0.3% Delta-9 THC. So cannabis is the plant, but based on the amount of Delta-9 THC, it's either hemp, if there's not enough THC to be psychoactive, or it's considered marijuana. Now, way back in the day when the government decided they wanted to ban marijuana, to ban a drug, you have to define a drug. So this distinction, this 0.3% Delta-9 THC, is the federal definition of what makes something marijuana. Now, what happened in 2018 was the hemp farmers went to the government and said, hey, listen, we're being punished because what happens when you grow hemp naturally is a lot of times the strain of hemp will have less than 0.3% Delta-9 THC. So it's from the cannabis plant, it's hemp, it's not marijuana, so that's been legal. But things like weather, things like precipitation can affect that concentration. And so the hemp farmers would sometimes lose crops and lose whole seasons potentially because when their hemp was harvested, the amount of Delta-9 THC was above what the federal government would permit. So basically, they started out trying to grow hemp from cannabis, they ended up with marijuana. So what the federal government did in 2018 was pass the Farm Bill. And basically, this took hemp off of the controlled substance list and protected farmers and said, hey, listen, you know, we know that your goal is probably not to grow marijuana and that you have some protection. So it was a federal statute that protected the right to grow hemp as long as it had less than 0.3% Delta-9 THC. This is in 2018, and this is where things get really wild. So Delta-9 THC is one of the cannabinoids, one of the molecules that exist on cannabis. And it's thought to be one of the ones that's most psychoactive when we talk about marijuana. The thing that I didn't realize, I don't think the federal government realized, is that when you look at the cannabis plant, there are a lot of other cannabinoids. There's Delta-8, there's Delta-10, there's HHC, and if you take a naturally growing hemp plant, if you take one that's even engineered to make extra hemp here in the rope making business, these other cannabinoids exist on the flower. They exist on the thing that you would pick that would look by all accounts like marijuana. The issue has been if you just pull hemp off of a hemp plant and smoke it, you're not gonna get high. There's not gonna be enough to get any type of psychoactive response. But people are smart and people, people value money. And so what happened when the farm bill was passed in 2018 is folks said, hey, look, if it's now legal, fully legal for me to grow hemp, we're gonna grow hemp and we're gonna to try to extract these cannabinoids. And so what they did is got a bunch of hemp and then using chemical reactions, putting solvents on these, they essentially distilled out or extracted the other cannabinoids. So not Delta-9 THC, but Delta-8 THC, Delta-10 THC. So they found that when you got those and you extract them and you concentrate them, that suddenly if you smoke that, or if you eat some type of gummy or vape that substance, that concentrated Delta-8, that concentrated Delta-10, and that seems to treat folks very similar to how Delta-9 THC would work, which makes sense if you look at the molecules here. The difference between Delta-8 and Delta-9 really comes down to the molecular structure. It's not a huge difference. In fact, you look at this, it's one double bond put in another place. So what we saw after the farm bill was passed is a bunch of chemists said, hey, let's concentrate Delta-8, let's concentrate Delta-9 and make cannabis-like products. So a lot of these CBD stores that would spring up would have, you go in, it looks like a dispensary. There's jars of what looks like marijuana. It's not marijuana because per federal law, marijuana has to have more than 0.3% Delta-9 THC. So what you're looking at is saturated with THC, but it's Delta-8, it's Delta-10, and those were protected by the farm bill. So people started to go to these shops or go online and buy edibles, vapes, joints, flour, all the stuff that looks just like you'd get if you're buying marijuana from a dispensary or from some place where it might be available or legal. 
And this is where it started to get tricky for the public because what the public thought was, if I can just buy this at the store, in fact, they sell it at the grocery store. It must be safe. This must not really be marijuana. And by federal definition, it's not marijuana because of the low concentration of Delta 9 THC. But what a lot of the public missed was the fact that if you concentrate Delta 8 or Delta 10, you can get a pretty impressive psychoactive response. We started to see this show up in a lot of different settings within the house of medicine. We see ED visits where people said, well, you know, I went to the store, I bought these gummies, I took them. They're out of their mind. They're totally high. It looks just like if they took too much Delta 9 THC. Even beyond that, this industry looking at synthetic cannabinoids has gotten much, much more creative. But more recently, there's been a new player that I'm seeing more in the emergency department that I think we all need to know about, and that is THCA. What is THCA? This is even wilder. This is a government loophole on top of a loophole. So THCA is a cannabinoid that naturally exists on the cannabis plant, just like Delta-8, just like Delta-10, and just like Delta-9. Now remember, Delta-9 THC is how we define marijuana. THCA is not in the current definition of marijuana. But when you grow hemp, some strains will have a lot of THCA and actually pretty high concentrations of THCA. Now, if you were to take that hemp and eat it, nothing's gonna happen to you other than your stomach might hurt because THCA is not psychoactive. Unless you do one simple thing. If you decarboxylate THCA, it changes from THCA to THC. In fact, from THCA to Delta 9 THC. Sounds fancy if you're not sure what decarboxylation is. I was unsure too. Basically expose it to fire, which is problematic because that's how people most often consume marijuana. Put it in a joint, you expose it to fire. So what's happening with THCA is people are growing these plants that per federal law, based on that 2018 farm bill, are legal to grow. They're isolating out strains in the, at the plant level to say, hey, this is loaded with THCA. Then they're harvesting it, selling it at joints, selling it as flour. And when people light that like they would with marijuana, they are getting essentially the exact same exposure that they'd get if this had been a marijuana plant, if this had been a plant that was primarily bred to have high levels of Delta 9 THC. When I first heard about this, I thought this has to be illegal because basically this is saying I can grow a plant, my cannabis has high levels of THCA, and when I had Delta-8 or Delta-10, you had to get a chemist, you had to extract the cannabinoid. It wasn't present in high enough concentrations. Not the case with THCA, it's just right there on the flower to be consumed. And so people are going crazy. If you talk to folks that run some of these stores or these websites, this has become the best seller. How is this possibly legal? Number one, I don't know that the government fully understood what would happen if you just simply exposed THCA to fire. The other thing is that some of these THCA plants, if you look, they have over 21% of Delta 9 THC after they're decarboxylated. So normally that would be illegal under federal law. That would just be marijuana. But the hemp industry is different and most hemp places get tested about a month before the plant is harvested. And when you look at how THC grows and presents on the flower, typically a month before harvest, there's not enough there to cross that threshold and get into the kind of categorization of marijuana. So it's a loophole on top of a loophole that has made THCA legal. So what do we need to know about this if you're a consumer or if you're a clinician? So a couple of things. One of the questions I get in the emergency department a lot of the time is, is this stuff real? Whether we're talking about Delta-8, Delta-10, THCA. The, the real answer is from a scientific standpoint, we're not really sure what a lot of this stuff does. And that, that holds true with a lot of drugs, whether they're illicit or otherwise. We don't have great literature to say this strain of marijuana can make you feel this way compared to this strain. We have even less when it comes to these products. Now, one of the problems is that these synthetic cannabinoids and THCA are thought of. You see advertisements where people say this is kind of the junior varsity marijuana. This may get you a little buzz. It won't get you really high. That does not seem to be the case at all. If I think about folks that show up in my emergency department, we are seeing a ton of these patients who take high doses of Delta-8 and become totally altered. It's just like you would see if somebody took high doses of Delta-9 or what we traditionally call marijuana. So there actually is a thought that some of these cannabinoids, Delta-10, HHC, and maybe even THCA, are actually more psychoactive than Delta-9. So not only are these products able to get folks intoxicated to the same magnitude we see with marijuana, they may be even stronger. So 
are these things real? Yes, I think if you're thinking about synthetic cannabinoids, including THCA, I would assume if you're treating patients who've taken these or someone's asking your opinion, just treat these the same from a functional standpoint as you would with Delta 9 THC or marijuana. What are the risks? And this is where it gets even trickier too. So the number one thing to worry about is that this market for synthetic cannabinoids is totally unregulated. Now that's changing rapidly. A lot of states are coming in and saying, you gotta have third parties, look at these products, tell the consumer what's in the products. But right now, you can go online and buy basically anything you wanna buy. And some of the problems come up when you think about how do they make these products? So Delta-8 is a good example. You cannot get enough Delta-8 to become psychoactive unless you expose it to chemicals. Now, there are ways that that can be done where those chemicals aren't present in dangerous quantities, but there's no regulation to say, you've got to do it the way that's safe. And in fact, if you look at some of the products that are sold as Delta-8 flour, so that's the little nugget of green stuff that people think, oh, that's, that's marijuana. Well, it's Delta-8, it must be legal, it must be safe. Not necessarily. So Delta-8, has to be extracted chemically and then sprayed back onto a product, back onto something that you can then consume, that you can then smoke. And so the problem there is you're smoking not only the Delta-8, but the chemicals that were involved, pulling that out and spraying it back onto the, the substance that you're gonna burn. So there's a particular risk there, but the big thing is that we really just, this is the wild west. We have no idea what's in these products it's hard to give folks good advice if somebody says, I wanna try this to help with my symptoms, I wanna sleep better. I don't know medically if that's a good idea or a bad idea. What I do know is that this is a very unregulated industry, so people have to be really careful. So take away safety tips. What I would say, putting my doctor hat on, is that smoking things is generally bad for our lungs. That's easy to recommend, whether it's Delta 9 THC or classic marijuana, or you wanna smoke something like THCA, Delta 10, Delta 8. Generally, smoking is dangerous. There's not a real upside to that. Vaping is problematic. There was a big fear about vaping a couple of years ago. That's kind of lessened as the vape industry has become more regulated, but still, it exposes our lungs to things that we might not want around our lungs. One of the things that we see becoming a problem is tinctures and edibles. The issue here is that people, again, I think assume that this must be okay, this must be safe because it's legal, and they don't think about the dosing. I had a patient recently who took 400 milligrams of Delta 10 THC. Now, if you look at states that have legalized marijuana, the recommended starting dose for a marijuana edible is five milligrams. This patient was totally altered. And when I asked them later when they got better, why they took this big dose, they had no idea about dosing and they had no idea that this was strong or anywhere near what you'd see with actual marijuana. So I don't have any medical recommendations when it comes to how to do these substances safely. I would say be very careful. If these are things that you wanna use, I would talk to people in this industry. I would ask about the level of regulation and what chemicals are going in. Just any other recommendations, know what you're doing before you do it. This is not junior varsity cannabis. This stuff can absolutely cause the problems that you could see with marijuana. Be careful out there. The government is due to renew the farm bill in the upcoming year. Actually, it was supposed to be renewed in 2023. It got pushed a year. So there's thought that we may see some dramatic changes in this landscape. And probably what we'll see is more regulation and a closing a lot of these loopholes. But right now, I would challenge you, go to a gas station, go to a CBD store and find anything other than these products. The synthetic cannabinoids are out there. They're tremendously popular. We don't really know what they are. We do know that they'll make you very high if you let them. Be careful, use your best judgment. This is Hippo Education.